Hi, thanks for joining me for another edition of the Bell Video Blog. I'm Eric Bjornstedt with Bell. Today we're going to talk about the top five things you may not know about diesel engines, diesel fuel, and diesel additives. Uh, thing number one, diesel cars are cooler than they used to be. Um, the old uh, image of a diesel engine was that of a big rig, you know, barreling down the highway with black smoke belching out of the stacks. That's what most people think of when they think of diesel engines. And they take that image of the dirty diesel big rig truck and they transfer that image onto diesel cars. And so when someone says, hey, you should consider buying a diesel car, like a diesel sedan, they say, oh no, I would never do that. Diesel cars are dirty, nasty, they don't perform. Uh, unfortunately, those people are operating off of misconceptions from decades past. Diesel cars today are really, really advanced. Um, you know, BMWs, Audis, Mercedes, uh, you know, they're all making state-of-the-art diesel vehicles that perform exceptionally well and they get tons of gas mileage. Um, I remember about, uh, about probably about 2008, my, my wife and I went to on vacation to England where gas, diesel fuel, was like $10 a gallon. And we rented a car for about 10 days. They gave us a Skoda diesel station wagon. That thing was as sharp, as nice as any rental sedan you're going to get here in the States. And the thing was, is we got like 80 miles to a gallon because it was a diesel sedan. So diesel cars are cooler than they used to be. They're also, number two, diesel engines are a lot cleaner than they used to be. Again, refer back to that image of the black smoke belching out of the, you know, the big rig stacks. Well, that's not the case with diesel engines today, and that's because of mandates, both on the engine side and on the fuel side. Uh, diesel engines, uh, all newer diesel engines uh, today are required to have specific uh, what they call emissions control systems on them. Uh, diesel users will know exactly what I'm talking about. They have to have particulate traps, they have to have diesel exhaust fluid systems. Um, a, particulate tr uh, a particulate trap, excuse me, is uh, basically it's a filter where all of that soot that used to go out into the atmosphere, instead of going out the stacks, it ends up in this trap. And this filter fills up its canister. It fills up over time with essentially partially burned diesel fuel. Uh, and then at a given inter interval, when it fills up, they have to take it into a, a servicing station. And they take that canister off and they, they, they basically finish the burning process. <clears throat> They finish the conversion of petroleum to carbon dioxide and water, which is what happens when you get perfect combustion. Um, and then they give the particulate filter back to the person, of course, after they paid a fee, naturally, to, for the service, and they go on their way until they have to get it uh, serviced again. These are particulate filters are saving millions and millions of tons of soot from going out into the atmosphere. Um, diesel exhaust fluid systems help to reduce NOx or nitrogen emissions, which are really bad for urban air quality. Between those two things, diesel engines uh, are really, really uh, clean. They're a lot cleaner than they used to be. So uh, that's point number two. Point number three, <clears throat> uh, you may not know, is that when you're comparing diesel fuel and gasoline, diesel fuel has a need for more need for additization than gasoline does because there's more properties that are specced with the diesel fuel that need to be protected. Um, the ASTM organization is the one that publishes fuel specifications saying diesel legally has to meet this list of specs and gasoline legally needs to meet this list of specs. And if you were to compare the two documents, you would see that the diesel one is a lot bigger. Um, there, uh, 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 diesel fuel has to be, be, be controlled for things like cetane, um, lubricity, cold weather performance, stability, uh, none of those things are things that gasoline really has to, to, to worry about. Now, gasoline worries about octane, not cetane, but those other things gasoline doesn't really have to worry about. And so, that means that there's a much bigger market for diesel fuel additives than gasoline additives. 
Um, <clears throat> number four, diesel fuel is more likely to have problems because it's more likely to be stored. Uh, that kind of relates to the point I was just making. Um, gasoline gets used up faster than diesel fuel. Uh, 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 for example, backup generators. Backup generators that get used like twice a year uh, or once every two years, they're always powered by, by diesel. And so you have to store the diesel fuel in order to have it available for those backup generators. Um, and therefore, that because you're storing diesel fuel a lot more often than you are gasoline, that creates potential problems. Um, water buildup in the storage tanks, uh, microbial uh, infestation of storage tanks, um, <clears throat> uh, the need for uh, antioxidants and stability improvers to be added to that stored diesel in order to make sure that the combustion qualities are stable over time. All those things are, are what, what diesel fuel users have to consider uh, in fuel treatment for their fuel that gasoline users don't have to. Uh, last thing, okay, and this is this is applicable for both gasoline and diesel. Is um, the fifth thing is since we're talking about additives, there's a lot of good diesel additives out there, but no additive can do everything that you want it to do for as low as you want it to do, uh, and therefore you need to know what you want it to do. Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> business teachers go to business school. They talk about that how uh, you can have something that's the best quality, uh, you can have the best service, and you can have the lowest price. Now, for those three things, you can have two of the three at the same time, but you can never have all three at the same time. You could have something that's the lowest price and it's the best quality, um, but you're not going to be able to provide the best, the best service or pick any other of the two combinations. You can't have all three at the same time. Well, fuel ladders are kind of the same way, except we have four things to consider that we have. You can have something that does the most things. You can have something that does all of those things very effectively or very well. That's number two. You can have something that does all of those things for a very low tree rate, like really concentrated. That's number three. And you can have something that does whatever it does for the lowest possible price. Now, those four things, you can have combinations of those four things, but you're never going to have a fuel additive that does all four of those things at the same time. Um, <clears throat> and that's important to, to keep in mind because uh, somebody, a, a diesel user who has to make a decision about diesel fuel treatment, they are going to get bombarded with information from everybody and their brother who's claiming to have some new thing out there that does everything in the world uh, for no money. Um, the reason why they're doing that is because, <clears throat> okay, no money is a little bit of exaggeration for some money. And the reason why they're, they're, they're making those claims is because they want you to part with that some money. But the smart user is going to know that typically uh, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Okay, so obviously Bell Performance has been a manufacturer of fuel labs for a really long time. Um, <clears throat> but we're not going to sit here and tell you that uh, you know, our diesel, diesel fuel treatment is the one that you always have to use. Uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to give you the information and let you decide for yourself. So, you know, when we formulate diesel, we formulate it so that it will address uh, all of these major things. You know, it'll provide cetane, it'll clean, you know, provide detergency, it'll improve mileage, <clears throat> it'll improve lubricity for the diesel fuel, it'll uh, help control water, you know, all those things. And we and it does it at a reasonably low treat rate. That's number two. Um, of course, we formulate it to be really effective, and we formulate it to be, uh, you know, competitive in the marketplace. <clears throat> If you compare it to something else, you might have something else that says, well, hey, these all does six things, ours does ten, and does it for, you know, one gallon, you know, you put one drop in 10,000 gallons of fuel and you're good to go. That's when you start saying, you know, you can be effective, you can do a lot of things, um, you can do it uh, for a really low treat rate and not for a really low cost. An additive like that somebody was trying to convince you to buy that, you would probably think, 
I'm not going to get all four of those things at the same time. Maybe that 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 thing um, isn't as <clears throat> uh, legitimate as they want it to seem. So, those are the five things you may not know about these fuel additives. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, I am Eric Bjorn, so with Bell Performance. Check us out on the web at bellperformance.com and wefixfuel.com. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye-bye.